Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our weekly Stars Align video. My friends, my friends, my friends, we are here. We are here together to talk about episode seven. But before we get into that, I do, as always, want to give a big, big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter. At Kisachan94, at YatoGamist, and at FireOtaku845. Thank you all so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter, and if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Stars Align video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at JojoTalksToMuch over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. Okay, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and dive into this week. We're gonna discuss it we're gonna piece uh take it apart piece by piece and really get into the 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 thick of things or into the meat of things since there is a barbecue in this week's episode um remember when this show was about uh <laughs> remember when this show was about like intense drama i was gonna say like remember when this show is about abuse <laughs> it's like uh yeah i do but the thing about the show now is that it's really leaning into that tennis thing and it it's it's bizarre because after going through such intense drama i'm suddenly finding myself like getting shonen-esque hype from the series like the, the 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 whole partnership versus skill battle that we have in the first half of this week's episode in fact this this tennis match takes up the entire first uh the first half of this episode toma and maki going up against arashi and his partner whose name i do not recall since his poor partner is basically not really his partner he's more of just an extra set of parts as the show likes to refer to him he's he's just a spare player because uh, arashi is basically good enough on his own he doesn't need the others uh and or he doesn't need uh his partner as far as he's concerned, because that ends up uh, actually being a, a genuine moment of growth for this character in a in the span of maybe ten to uh, maybe ten to twelve minutes, we see this character go from incredibly cocky to shaken to worried to trusting, and it you genuinely buy it. You and it's all done through the animation and uh action instead of like just explaining this character going through an arc over the court like it's a little mini arc right because he's still arashi at the end of it he's still like i can't like i refuse to lose to these two like he does still get upset and he is still a bit i want to say a bit he is still very cocky he's still the same character that we met two episodes ago however his moment of growth where he you have this moment in the the midst of the tennis match where he says like is this him and he, he's looking right at maki and y'all okay listen you know me you know me when i see two characters like each other or two characters like even just like glance at each other i'm like yep that's a ship right there and like Y'all, I, I can imagine these two. Like to me, this gave me and and uh, the, the amount of of anger this will this will rise uh, this will bring up. But this gave me like strong free vibes, right? Where I was like, okay, so Toma is like Makoto, Maki is like Haru, <laughs> and Arashi is Rin. And if you know anything about me, you know that Rin Haru is life okay you know this if you've if you've been on the channel for like even five seconds you probably could tell that rin haru is my ship because with makaharu you know what i'm, I'm gonna go into that another day that, that's if we ever do the rate your ships video that i i could go on and on about makaharu because not not that i ship it because i really don't ship it i respect that people do and i understand why but i actually think that makoto being on his own makes him a better character and genuinely makes that friendship all the more stronger. They're actually stronger apart and, and I could go into that. We're not here to talk about free now, but we are here to compare it to Stars Align because, oh my goodness, when I saw, okay, I know I should be talking about the tennis match, but I'm, I'm going to be kind of jumping all over the place in this one because I have a lot of feelings. And one of the feelings that I had was, ooh, this is giving me strong Red Haru vibes. And it's uh, Maki and Arashi were like giving me like the vibe. I'm like, okay, I could ship this. It's not quite, it doesn't have cannons, but I could ship this. I can get on board. 
I'm, I'm kind of in. I ship Har- uh, <laughs> I ship Haru and Rin. I ship Lugosi and Louie from Beastars. I can ship things that ain't canon. I'm on board. Although when I say ain't canon, let's be real. Rin Haru's pretty much canon. And, and Lugosi and, and, and Louie, I mean, like, that's also pretty much canon. And as far as I'm concerned, Maki and Arashi, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. I'm like, yeah, no, that's canon. I, I don't know what y'all talk about. That, that's just canon. They, they had barbecue together. If, if that doesn't make you a couple, I, I don't know what is. You can tell it's been a long time since I went on a date. <laughs> but my friends, don't fret, because if you're wondering, what about Toma? Well, don't you worry, because this actually solves everything. And by everything, I mean, I was worried, right? Because Yuta clearly crushes on Toma. And I was like, oh no, but I ship Maki and Toma because the show's given me strong, like, Maki and Toma have some kind of connection, but for whatever reason, I wasn't quite shipping it because I felt like Yuta belonged with Toma, but Maki was kind of intruding. But then they became like an OT3 for a little bit, so I was like, okay, well, maybe they're gonna OT3 it up. Maybe that's what my, my shipping self is like, like does not compute, and so maybe that's what it was. But no, it's because Maki had a better ship down the line, and my shipping self was like, wait, give it time, and the time has arrived. And I was like, oh, Maki and friggin' Maki and Arashi is the ship right now. But Toma and Yuta have a little moment here too, where I was like, yo, I'm cool. I, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with this. Like, y'all, I'm, I'm good with this. Like, I was like, yep, yep. Toma with Yuta, Maki with Arashi, it's all good. It's all good. I was like, yes, this is the ships. I doubt it's ever gonna be. Like, if we can be, like, not shippy, and not like in our own fanon for a second is probably never gonna happen. Like either one of these ships, I don't see happening. I appreciate that they actually made Yuta like closeted. So he, like we know that he's gay. Um, I, I Well, I mean, maybe he's, I, I don't know if he's he's openly gay, but like they acknowledge like Yuta is gay or maybe he's not gay. He could just be bi. He may just be into Toma uh, either way whatever, but I appreciate that they acknowledge, like, no, Yuta's into Toma. Because yes, Crispy Nets is right, labels ain't nothing, and you can ship whoever the hell you want, because, you know, sexuality's fluid. You, th that character could be into that character, and they may not be gay. They might just be into that, that person right now. I don't know. However, the point is that they do acknowledge that Yuta is into Toma. So this whole time, I'm thinking, like, Yuta better, better, like, step up to be like, hey, Maki, you intruding on my boy. Now I understand that y'all are partners, so I'm gonna have to let some of it go, but like, this my boy, I said dibs. But luckily, Yuta doesn't have to say dibs anymore because Maki found his own boo, and I'm so all about it because Arashi is, again, much like Rinharu, they kinda need each other. Like, I can see Arashi, like, needing a friend in, in that understands him a little bit, and he's so intrigued by Maki. Like, I don't think he needs him in the same way Rin and Haru, like, need each other. But Arashi is so, like, fascinated by, by, by Maki. You could tell he's, I wonder if Maki is ever gonna become, like, involved, or, sorry, Arashi will ever become involved with what's going on with Maki, like, at home, right? Because we know that Toma knows. I do still think the teacher has to know uh, but I, I do wonder how Arashi's relationship with Maki will develop. And when I say relationship, I don't mean like like a romantic relationship. I hope it becomes romantic, but I, again, like if we can step out of fanon for like a second, it's probably not gonna happen, uh, but I'm gonna ship it anyway. But their friendship, I should say. Like I want to see how their friendship develops. And it's, I don't know, I, I just, guys, I, I really like Arashi. I think Arashi, I, I probably made him the thumbnail of the video. I love this character. He's probably my new favorite. I, I like I something about the angry one. I'm I'm always just like I want to see what the angry one's up to. It's the same thing with my hero, where I'm just like I want to see what Bakugo's up to. <laughs> like, although from what I gather, we ain't gonna have much of Bakugo this season. But um, anyway, besides the point, I'm jumping all over the place. This this video. I'm sorry. It's just th this video really got my like my shippy side going, and I was like I was not expecting this. But it's, it, it's such a, I, I should say, I should know, right? Cause like the first half of the episode is all tennis. And some of you guys watching had said that you weren't really invested in the tennis. You were more invested in the characters themselves. Like the tennis, you could kind of take it or leave it. So some people may not be as into this episode as I was, but, but here's the thing. That tennis match was fantastic. It is the best tennis match of the show so far. Fight me on this one, and again, I still haven't seen Ace uh, Ace of Diamond or whatever that show is. 
So I could be wrong. I haven't I haven't caught up on that show yet. But for my money, that's one of the best matches in sports anime this year. Like that match was so good. It told a mini story in about like 10 to 12 minutes. It and you knew it was gonna get real when the OP started to play, and you're like, oh, our boy's making a comeback. I was so proud. I was so proud of Maki and Toma. My boys, they went in, they didn't hold nothing back, they put everything they had on the tennis court, and they pushed Arashi to his limits, and Arashi's partner too, I might add. Arashi's partner gave gave his, gave as much as he could. I don't remember his name, and that's a disservice to that character, because he actually had a nice little moment, a couple nice little moments with Arashi, where like, they're, they're t uh, them as teammates and them as tennis partners, was genuinely fun to see. Like again, that little mini story over the course of like 10 to 12 minutes was absolutely fantastic. You got the OP plan, you got like the whole side sideline talk, which I love in sports anime, seeing like the other characters commenting on what's happening. Uh, Mitsue and Yuta having their little like side banter, it's great. Uh, the animation, the animation. Like I know that they had to either have rotoscoped this or they had to be paying like the most intense attention to detail because some of these moves like the way the characters move even the way their clothes sort of jostle around as they're making the movements it is fantastic some of the best animation the show's had and the sh and last week don't forget last week the show had some killer animation so for me to say that uh, that, that means something the rest of the episode though the rest of the episode unfortunately kind of meanders a bit uh once we get to the once we get to arashi showing up at the barbecue then it gets interesting again but there's sort of this like meandering, like we're just kind of here to have fun. Actually, no, I lied. There's one moment in that sort of like in between the Arashi showing up to the barbecue and the tennis match, like between in between those two parts of the episode, there's like a lot of meandering, except they're the boys are getting ready for that, that, uh, that day of practice. And Itsuki shows up to the change rooms. Now, if you remember, Itsuki has burn marks on his back from when he was an infant. His his mom uh, straight up Shoto Todoroki'd him, uh, which is what I'm gonna say because I don't want to say what actually happened because it it breaks my heart and I don't know. It's 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 still that that is I, I still think about that as like that's so intense. Like these characters have such sad backs. His mom burnt him with a kettle. You know what I mean? Like that's. He was a baby! Like, that's this poor kid, right? So, Itsuki walks into the change room, and I'm thinking, what are we doing? Itsuki doesn't change in the change room. I thought we established it. So, at first, I thought it was like a continuity error, So because I was like, what's Itsuki doing there? But the characters all acknowledge that, like, Itsuki, what what are you doing here? And, and there's this, like, this pause. Itsuki doesn't say a friggin' thing. He just changes. Like, he just gets into his uniform, doesn't say a word, and yeah, you see it, you see the burn marks, and I'm probably showing them. Uh, like you see, like it's no joke. It it's pretty gnarly, but you know what? I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him for embracing the team as not only his friends, but a second family. You know, like like that is a, a big moment for that character, for him to feel comfortable enough to say, "Yeah, this is me." This is what happened. He never did that before. Once Maki showed up and the team started to come together as a unit, now Itsuki feels comfortable enough to show his scars. And you can read that in just like the surface level of it that like Maki now feels comfortable enough with the group. But you can also read it like, uh, like as a deeper meaning that the group is willing to share their emotional scars with each other and that will actually help them to heal. So that one little moment has like two meanings, right? Because yeah, Itsuki showing his scars does show like, hey, I'm cool with you guys. And I'm, I'm comfortable with you guys seeing this side of me that I, like this part of me, literal part of me. Again, this, this is if you're just taking it literally. I'm comfortable with you guys seeing this literal part of me that makes me uncomfortable, but I trust you guys to not say anything and to just kind of move on. And we're just gonna deal with it. And on the, the the deeper level, you have it that that Itsuki feels comfortable enough to lay his problems out in the open to his teammates, and that they will acknowledge those problems and they'll help him heal emotionally. But like you know, you know what I mean. Like it's it, it served two meanings. And Itsuki, 
he, he's one of those characters that I'm fascinated by. I want to see him, but is it wrong that part of me is just like, I want to see you go dark side again. <laughs> just because, like, it was such a shock moment to see him thwack the kid with the racket. Don't get me wrong, I was like, yo, you're a punk if you use weapons. Like, you don't use weapons like that. That's not cool. But I wouldn't mind seeing him, like, throwing fists if somebody comes up and, like, tries to say something for a second. Like, during the barbecue, I was like, Itsuki's gonna punch Arashi right in the friggin' head. <laughs> like, I was worried he was gonna, like, throw, like, the barbecue at his face or something. But, nah, Itsuki, I know it's wrong of me, but I'm like, if something pops off, right? Like, if, if some other player or something like that pops off... I want Itsuki to be the one to, like, tap the shoulder and then just sucker punch, like, you know what I mean? Like, Itsuki, Itsuki's their, their Wolverine, right? He's, like, the, the, the one, the small one, you don't expect him to be, like, a total badass, but he's the best there is at what he does, and what he does isn't very nice. That's, that's Itsuki on the team. Where did I take this video? I'm sorry. But yeah, other than that scene, which I apparently had more to say about than I thought, but again, Itsuki's like, you know, that's a big moment for that character. So I, I'm glad that we did take a second to acknowledge that that happened. But also I wanna talk about uh, the barbecue because that is an important part of the episode. And we have uh, the teacher who they refer to as uh, Taki, but I think they mean Taki because it's written as Taki. So are they calling him Taki? As in like that outfit is Taki? Or are they calling him Taki like, like in reference to maybe his last name. I don't know. I don't remember the, the teacher's actual name, so I've literally been referring to him in my head as Taki, <laughs> Taki Sensei. I'm probably mispronouncing it, as I do with everything on this channel. I apologize in advance. But yeah, um, I th like that moment. The teacher, I I've said this before, uh, but the teacher's one of, like, now that we have Arashi, he's my second favorite, but for a while he's my favorite just because he's the one that I related to the most. I also relate a hell of a lot to, to Mitsue than I, I think I'm willing to admit because <laughs> she's she hangs out in the side. Like, she's us, you know? Like, she hangs out on the side and just kind of watches things and then adds her two cents. And I feel like she's me because when you think about it, like, when you really, really think about it, what am I doing? I am watching the show on the sidelines, like watching from my computer chair, and then I come over here to my microphone and I talk about it and I add my two cents. What does Mitsue do? She sits on the sidelines and adds her two cents. We are Mitsue. I am Mitsue. I don't know, I like that character. I know people have their gripes with her, but I like her, but I mainly relate to the teacher because the teacher, A, he kind of looks like me, at least in my opinion, and B, his whole personality is just very, like, we are kind of similar. So I was, I, I, he was my favorite. Arashi showed up. Now he's my second favorite. But his, his idea was to take everybody to go to the barbecue. And the barbecue is where we get the Arashi scene. And we also get the Toma and Yuta scene. So that moment was great. The, the, the barbecue itself, at first, I was just like, okay, are we going to spend the rest of the episode just kind of hanging out and eating barbecue? Like, I'm not against that. It didn't make me hungry, though, like, admittedly. But if the rest of the episode is just them ha hanging out having barbecue, that's fine, because the first half of the episode is so good. But for a little bit, I was sort of like, okay, like, okay, it's just the characters hanging out. Like, you do need that, you know, you need to show the characters bonding. So, like, that's fine, I get it. Uh, but the episode does pick up once uh, Arashi shows up with his good boy, with his good good boy Kamui, which honestly, I'm uh, li listen, if you've seen the show that I'm about to say, even just bringing up the name may hurt because it's been so long since we got another season, but, like... It just reminded me of how long it's been since I last watched an episode of Golden Kamui. And Golden Kamui was so good. And just like Golden Kamui, Kamui the doggo is a good boy. He's a good Kamui. He's a good boy. I was like, yay, doggo. And that, that super made me like Arashi because I'm like, he's a dog person. Nice. This is a, Arashi's a good kid. I like Arashi too. He's a good lad. But yeah, everybody, I, I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed uh, parts of the episode. There's some parts of the episode where I was sort of like kind of nodding along. I don't totally w get what's going on with the end credit scene. Like they said, like the team was training after hours or something, and one of the parents can play. I don't know. I'm not gonna comment on it too much because uh, I realized that I'm commenting on it right now. But yeah, it's the the the, the post credit scene. I don't really have an opinion because I I don't know who is complaining. I don't know what they're really complaining about. So we'll wait till next week, but that does tell me like next week we're getting back into the feels. So if that's what you're watching the show for, in comes some edge next week, I think. 
So yeah, there, there's that. With that said, everybody, that's gonna wrap up this week's video. I'm gonna go ahead and put this episode into the A tier. I thought this was fantastic, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And on that note, everybody, that's gonna wrap up today's video. But before we take off, I wanna give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier. Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, Gin Kotaku, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Omner Garamond, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven, Tristan, Verdin, and Westbourne Eastbred. A huge thank you to those of you who support the channel over on Patreon, and if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then be sure to check out that first link in the description to check out our Patreon page, see all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord. Thanks once again for checking out today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, then you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already, so I ain't gonna tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you are feeling stressed out today, then you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I will talk to you all again real soon.